Hey guys, this is Jackie from Jack Gets Lost Out of a Call, and this is my second time filming this video, because my problem is I talk way too much and I ramble way too much about crap that has nothing to do with books. So let's try this again, shall we? Um, this is the Clean Slate book tag. I watched Murphy Napier's video, um, she's one of my favorite booktubers, um, and I will post the link to the original creator of this video, or if I cannot find it because her channel is deleted or something, or she deleted the video, then I will post Murphy Napier's video. So on to the questions, and this time I am not going to go off on tangents. I mean, I might still do that, but I'm going to try not to make it as long so that this video will upload and I don't have to spend all day refilming this. Okay, so the first question is, are there any genres you want to read more of this year in 2018? And that is nonfiction and historical fiction. Um, now, my problem with nonfiction is sometimes, because, you know, you go through all those years in school where you're reading textbooks all the time. So it's like nonfiction is a turnoff for me because of that. But now I've read, like last year, I read a handful of nonfiction books like Brain on Fire, The Paris Letters, which is a memoir. Um, um, Free Skinks and Asperger Syndrome, A Guide to Adolescence. And those books are written in a really, in a good, easy way. They were like, they were all memoirs. So it was easy for me to get into them and to appreciate them. And they weren't boring. Now I do want to re continue getting back to David McCullough's um, John Adams biography. Because I borrowed that one from my brother-in-law. Like, I think it's been two years now and I still have not gotten back to reading it. Because I did start reading it. So I need to give it back to, I need to read it so I can give it back to him. And then I want to read 1776. Um, and then I also want to read more historical fiction. Like I've read historical fiction before and I'm currently reading The Trader's Wife by um, by Alison Pataki. Which it's funny because I already have, because our elderly neighbors, um, he gave me, the husband gave me his books, some of his books. And one of them was the Accidental Empress, which is the, a princess of Aust a famous princess in Austria, Hungary, and I did not realize that I already had that that she was the same author as this author. This one, um, the Trader's Wife, I got at the used bookstore, and I, rem you know, I saw it, and I, you know, wasn't thinking about who wrote it or anything like that, and I just liked what it was about, and then I realized. You know, looking at my collection of books I took down because I feel like I need to get to those because there are books that I might possibly, you know, I like them, but once I finish reading them, I probably will donate them to the bookstore or give them to someone else that might appreciate them more. Um, so I took that one, The Accidental Empress, off the shelf, and then I was like, wait a second, you know, read the author's name, or actually, no, there was a blurb on here. You know, where, like, or, you know, you know how sometimes some books say, say, like, the author who wrote the award-winning book, blah, 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 and I saw that, and it was like, and then I realized, oh my god, I have that book that was mentioned on there, I was like, oh my god, I have two of her books, yay, because I always, like, I always try to get more than one book by the same author if I, I'm enjoying their writing so far. So, yes, I want to read more historical fiction because I feel like it's too easy for me to pick up a fantasy or a YA novel. Um, like, particularly a YA fantasy. So, I want to, and I really love historical fiction. So, I definitely want to read more of that. And I also want to read more horror because, again, that's another genre I really enjoy when I do read it. And I read, like, a lot of Stephen King. Okay, and I also read Goosebumps when I was a kid. Okay, so sadly, question number two, I don't have an answer for. I'm sorry. I just, not that I can recall, but, um, are there any books that you've read that have changed your philosophies? And I, I can't. I mean, I can't think of any books. I mean, I have read uh, books about the whole civil rights movement and the ra racism and stuff. And yeah, I definitely think, you know, 
that there is still racism in, in racism in the world and stuff, but I've never, you know, I've never really thought about, oh, this person has different skin colors I do. I've never cared about that. You know, so my philosophy, I've never had a negative philosophy about black people. I don't care, you know, if they're black or not. You know, if they're if I like their personality and get, you know, then, yeah. So I've, you know, and there's... I mean, there's definitely books I've read where I feel bad for characters in their situations, and I'm, it definitely makes me appreciate my life more and how lucky I am. Okay, so then, so I don't really have an answer for that question. Question number three. Who would you recommend a newbie to watch, a newbie booktuber? There are a lot of booktubers I love and I'm really enjoying. Um... I will say the three I said, and I might men I think I'm gonna mention a few more after these three. But Sam from Thoughts on Tome, she's really cool. I love what she has to say um, about her books. She likes a lot of fantasy, but she tries to read other stuff too. But mostly she reads fantasy. Um, but I just like her and what she has to say about books. Um, a book all of oh, and she's also a, b a bigger booktuber, one of the more popular ones. A b Olivia from A Book All of, she's really cool. I love what she has to say about books. And how well she speaks passionately, even when she does her drunk videos, because she'll do drunk book reviews. And even then, she still speaks so eloquently, and she sounds like she knows what she's talking about. Um, and even if it's a book that I originally had no interest in, she'll once I, I enjoy watching her reviews on the book, and it definitely gets me interested. And then a newer booktuber, that's a smaller booktuber, is That's the Novel Lush. She is so cool. I love what she has to say. Again, she's another booktuber. I love what she has to say. And she's she's very honest and very blunt and straightforward. Like, she takes no bullshit, no crap. She will just give you an honest review about a book. Um, let's see. Katie Tastic, Jesse the Reader, Poland and Bananas. Those are some more popular booktubers that I really, really enjoy. They get so excited, enthusiastic, and passionate about the books. They have so much energy, and I just love watching them. And they make me laugh. And um, and then another another booktuber that's kind of in the category of smaller booktuber, like the novel Lush, is the Sloth Reader. She's really cool. I like what she has to say about, and she's really nice. And by the way, she is a a Hufflepuff, so if you don't like Hufflepuff, you know, so Hufflepuff, how can you not like her if she's a Hufflepuff? I mean, she's, Hufflepuffs love everybody, and they're so accepting of everybody, and they're so nice, and, you know, they're, and she's one of them. So, I mean, that's one of another, because that is another good reason to, you know, to watch her. But, yeah, other than that, she just seems like a really cool person, and, Another one that I like what she has to say. And another one in the vein of Olivia from A Book Olive is, insert literary pun here. I, I feel bad because I don't remember her name, but she is, again, she's another one that's just well-spoken and very eloquent. And just gives these very thorough and very excellent and fascinating book reviews. Like A Book Olive. So I definitely recommend her as well for a new people. Okay, question number four. Do you have a reading bucket list? Kind of, but not one, not an official bucket list. I mean, there's definitely a lot of book, a lot of books that I definitely want to read before I die. Like, I want to actually read the original, the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And then there's some classics I want to read and reread. And yeah, so there are a lot, but I haven't, you know, I've, like, it's in my head. Okay, so question number five. What surprised you about BookTube? What surprised me is how nice these people are. I mean, yeah, I heard about it, of course, when I was watching BookTube videos and telling people that, you know, and they talk, they constantly say, like, on videos where that teach you how to make a booktube channel they you know they're so nice and there's very little bullying i mean i haven't crossed any across any and there's never i've never had an encounter with someone that has made me want to not do this they, they're so nice and they really care they're really respectful to each other and they really care and i mean and there's no like 
I mean, yes, there are people that have different opinions, and there are people that prefer characters over other characters, you know, and there's still the teens in YA novels and stuff, like Team, you know, Team Edward and Team Jacob, Team Gale and Team Peta. Um, you know, and sometimes people share opinions that I don't agree with, but we're still so, there's still such a nice group of people, and it's not like a war, like with fandom TV shows on Facebook. Because Facebook, you know, with BookTube, you're just watching a video and commenting. There's no direct interaction. But with Facebook, the problem is there is direct interaction. You can do this huge, long thread. I mean, you could technically do that on BookTube, too. But it's, like, I just, it stresses me out. I mean, I still like going on Facebook. And that's where my current, like, group of friends are, especially since I moved. And the two friends that actually lived in the same state as me, they're going, they're going to school and they haven't come to visit me yet because they're so busy. And so I rely on my socializing via Facebook, except for like when I go to work and stuff. But, um, I love being able to say that, that I go to work. This is just the sense of pride that I still feel. But yeah, and so that's why I go on there still, because my social life is on Facebook, which is probably really sad, but, I mean, I just moved, so we're going through kind of a transition period. But, um, but yeah, BookTube, but, but it's not ugly like it is on Facebook. And I, you know, people are just so nice. I mean, yeah, I'm sure at some point I'm going to run into some ugliness and people that are going to make me feel bad and make me feel insecure and stuff, but... And then the other thing that I say is I'm learning a lot about a lot of books, even books that I might not have considered because as I've said in previous question, the previous answer to question that it's so easy for me to go to the fantasy section and go to the YA section. And people talk about books that they even get me kind of interested in a genre that I will never read. That's contemporary. YA and contemporary to be specific. But, um, I've been introduced to a lot of series. I mean, there's a lot of books I read before I joined BookTube, but when I started watching BookTube and then I joined and started making my own videos, people, I was hearing about so many series, like The Raven Cycle, Sarah J. Mass's books, um, The Night Film, The Circle, um, let's see, I'm looking at all the books I have here, um, The Fallen Kingdom series, there's, um, there are a lot of books and series that I would, I might have gone around to, I might not have, if I hadn't joined BookTube and heard people constantly talk about those books. And also, I found that there are people that like Kate more than as much as I do. So, it's, I'm definitely surprised at how exposed I am to all these different types of books and how many different types of BookTubers. I mean, like, I was trying to get this guy on Facebook that I, he was an acquaintance, we weren't friends or anything. I mean, we were he was one of my friends on Facebook, but I rarely talked to him. He just, um, and, you know, I was trying to get him to, because he already made some videos that could be booktube videos, and he said, I, you know, he didn't want to do that. He didn't want to upload it and make a channel. And I, at first, I assumed that it was because, oh, you're just shy and don't, you know, are kind of embarrassed. I'm like, well, don't be. You should just, who cares what they think? Just have fun with it. And, but then his, he said his actual reason wasn't because he was shy or anything, but because he thinks that BookTube is all about what you have to be, like, he said that, oh, I don't read a lot of YA. And it's like, excuse me? What, you think BookTube is all about YA? You think that you have to be a YA reader? It's like, no, you don't. I mean, there are a lot, yes, there are a lot of YA readers on BookTube. It makes a huge it dominate. It does kind of dominate the booktube community. But a lot of the booktubers I watch, like a book all of insert literary pun here. Peter, well, actually, no, Peter. Which, by the way, he's another booktuber that I think you should watch if you're a newbie. He's he's so awesome, so fun. Um, but I'm trying to think. There, are, like, there are a lot of booktubers that I watch that even if, whether they read. They don't just read why, or they don't read why at all. And I love watching them, and they're so great. And I, you know, I didn't want to push this guy. 
But I tried to find in small ways to interview, to hint to him, look, it's not just about why you don't have to read YA if you want to join BookTube. It's not a rule or an like an unspoken rule that you have to be a YA reader. And it's like, hmm, but hey. I'm so worried because I didn't want to push him, but at the same time, it drives me crazy that he automatically assumes. But anyway. Okay, so, um. So, yeah, basically, I'm saying that, you know, there are a lot of booktubers out there. There are so much, there are so many different types of booktubers out there that don't just read YA. They read a whole variety of stuff. Okay, so, that was question number five. Question number six. Name some of your goals. And they said in the original question that doesn't have to be book related or booktube related. So my two goals are I want to be more disciplined with what I, you know, I feel like I, I get kind of lazy. I neglect, th neglect things like cleaning my bathroom more thoroughly. Um, I feel like I get distracted by TV and movies. And I, you know, and I want to become an author and I neglect writing my book. I let myself get distracted. By the time I decide, okay, I need to work on my book, I have, like, the TV on, or I'm talking, or I'm watching booktube videos, and it's hard to give those up. So I definitely want to focus on that more. Like, I think what will help is instead of having something to watch, put on some music on my CD player. That might help. But, uh, of course, I am failing miserably so far at that. But I definitely need to work on that. And that but I just want to discipline myself more to do these things. And to not just be lazy and spend all day reading my books. I mean, I mean not, no, scratch that. Because reading your books is not a bad thing. It's not a waste. But I should say, instead of sitting down watching TV or watching booktube videos. Which is hard to give up, but I do want to slowly give it up. Like, I'm slowly giving up Facebook. I mean, I'm still sticking to it because, like I said, my social circle is mostly on Facebook at the moment. But I definitely want to do, I want to, I want to discipline myself to not let myself get distracted so easily. It's hard, but I, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to deter me. And then the, ne the next one is actually book related. And just, that's focus more on books instead of, like, it's so easy to watch a movie, to put it in a movie you know, or to watch a TV show. It's, it's, now, I still love movies and TV show versions because they give you a visual and they, you know, they're easy to watch. But I want to focus more on books and exercise my imagination and read more books. Because as I'm making these booktube videos, I feel like all my answers are referring to the same handful of books. So I definitely want to, when I do like things like this, like a book tag. So I want to focus more on books. I want to read more more books. I want to have more variety and focus more on those and try to be able to be one of those booktubers that can remember things from books, like little details and stuff, and talk so eloquently and recall things that aren't so easy to recall in books. So basically, my goal is to focus more on books. Continue, I should say, to focus more on books. Okay, question number seven. If you could meet any writer, actor, artist, who would you want to meet? Um, so this is kind of a long list. I just said a few people on here, but th these aren't the only people I would love to meet. Um, Sarah J. Matt, author of Why. Sarah J. Mass, I really like her books. I mean, sometimes she does things that I don't agree with, but I still would love to meet her because I still love, you know, love her books. Um, Stephen King, he's awesome. I just fell in love with him after reading it. It seems like such a cool, like, that kind of guy. Oh, I should have put on here George R. R. Martin. I'd love to meet him, too. Kate Morton, she writes a lot of historical fiction. She's really awesome. I definitely would recommend her. Um, she writes, like, historical mysteries where someone from the 21st century finds out about something that happened a long time ago, and she's trying to piece it all together and sometimes she connect, she's connected to it in some way and she's trying to figure out what happened in the past all those years ago so it's it's really interesting um and ha actor wise Anne Hathaway I had to I felt like I, I, I didn't want to just say male people you know actors I wanted to say actresses as well so Anne Hathaway I think she's really good I know she's you know I know she's not perfect 
you know, she's not very good at a British accent, apparently. I can't tell, though, because um, I'm obviously American, not British. Um, and, yeah, I know she's, you know, I've heard rumors that she's done some bad things. And some people have, there are even been rumors that she's not easy to work with. But I like her. I would love to meet her. I think she's a really good actress. Robert Downey Jr., he was, I fell in love with him in, back in 2008, I think. I mean, I always liked him, but, you know, his performance in Tropic Thunder, which is a comedy, a really good comedy, about parenting the whole acting business and the lengths that actors will go go to for a part. Like, his act, his character was an Australian actor that took on blackface and um, pretended to be a black man. Like, he was a method actor. And... You know, there was a black actor who actually auditioned, and he didn't get the one black part. And there was this animosity between the guy, Al, Al Pacino, Alpa, who was, you know, he was this rap singer who was trying to get into the business of movies. And Robert Downey Jr.'s character, um, Kirk Lazarus, who his character's name was um, Lincoln Osiris. So, um, there was a lot of animosity between the two characters throughout the whole movie. And it, was, it was just so funny. And they made such a lot of jokes, basically being... But they did it in a... At least, I think, of course, you guys can tell I'm mostly a white girl, white Asian girl. But, I mean, from what I can tell, it seemed like it was done very respectfully. And they weren't, you know, they weren't trying to be disrespectful or racist or anything they were just trying to be funny so i think it's a good movie but he's another one and then robert carlisle he's the guy from once upon a time who plays rumble stiltskin and who he was also in stargate universe as dr rush i don't remember what the first name was um he's an amazing brilliant underrated actor you don't you know he does more independent and british films so he's not like one of those big A-list stars, but he's really brilliant, and he should be an A-lister. But the problem, of course, with A-listers is it's more about the fact that they can do blockbuster movies and they're attractive looking, and it's not necessarily that they're good actors. And not that they aren't, you know, in my experience, some of them are really good actors. But it's it's about the politics of Hollywood. It's who you know essentially, and if you're a bankable star. So, but he's really good. He's a Scottish actor. He's, you know, I definitely recommend checking out his movies. Like, The Full Monty. One of his earlier series was, um, Hamish Macbeth, where he plays a police detective in the, the small town of Glasgow. Um, Glasgow, and uh, I can't say it. Um, Glasgow. That's what it is, Glasgow. And, let's see, what else is he done? He had, he was the villain, one of the villains in... Like, he was, he worked for the villain in Aragon. Um, unfortunately he dies in that movie. Spoiler alert. Um, he, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think of what other movies he's in. Um, Angel's Ashes, he was the father in that one. And, let's see, I'm trying to, well, there, um, like you said, The Full Monty, which, that's a funny British movie, by the way. Um. He's in Train Spotting. He's Big B in Train Spotting, which I'm not a big fan of that movie. But that's just I don't like the plot. I have no interest in the plot. I um I bought the movie, the you know and that was a mistake because I watched it once. I was like, okay, I don't like this. You know, I have no interest in a movie about these guys trying to overcome drugs, you know, and being crazy and stuff. Um, twenty. He was the I think it was twenty eight twenty eight weeks later. The second one, um, he was in that one too. Okay, and anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about him on this film as he's done, as you can see. Okay, so, um, next, question number eight. Would you rather have your life written about by your favorite author or acted in by your favorite actor in a movie? And I say, written by my favorite author, because one, first of all, you feel like, because it's book two, you feel like you have to say that. Because we're talking about books here. So you feel almost obligated to say that. Which is kind of what Murphy Napier said in her video. 
and also, if it's good enough and it's popular enough, it will probably be opted for a screen adaptation anyway. So it will probably become a movie anyway. So question number nine. What challenges do you want to overcome or improve on? Um, I want to be more, I want to look more comfortable and less awkward on here when I talk about things and do these book tags. When I talk, like when I talk about books. I feel like I'm just stumble along and I struggle and then I have these long pauses where I don't really think about what I want to say. I like forget what I want to say next. And I think the problem, the solution to that you know, is definitely take more notes before I do these videos and practice, which I do kind of practice sometimes. Like I will rehearse what I want to say in these videos. But I just get kind of nervous, a little bit nervous. I mean, I'm comfortable, but at the same time, I'm like, I feel awkward and weird. And, you know, I worry about that I'm going to say something that might offend somebody. Because when I start talking, as you can tell, I'm sure, I tend to get carried away and don't think about what I'm going to say. I just keep talking. So I definitely want to feel more comfortable and well-spoken and really sound like I know what I'm talking about. And just let it flow. I mean, so far I'm doing a pretty good, I think I'm doing a pretty decent job with this one. Not too many, not too many pauses, not too much of me stumbling around and trying to think of what to say next. Not going to let I might jinx myself. So I def that's something I want to improve on. Okay, so the last question is, what's some advice you would give someone thinking of deleting their channel? So I, my advice is kind of, and like kind of elaborate on Murphy Napier's advice. Um, I don't remember exactly what her advice was. It's, I guess she said, you know, if you're not having fun with it, then delete it. But I think, it maybe that, I mean, not that she was just saying, just saying, go delete it if it's not fun anymore. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah, she probably was, but not in such a blunt, like, okay, I, I, <laughs> shut up now. Um, well, I think, what I'm trying to say is that I think she, you know, I think you should think about it before you delete it. Like, decide, are you not having fun and don't want to do this anymore? Or if it's just in the moment, it's stressing you out and you're not having fun. And, you know, because maybe you should just take a break. I mean, I've seen a lot of booktubers, I've seen their videos, I come across videos where they have come just come back to booktube. Or have they taken a long break? Because, yes, if you're not having fun, then don't do it anymore. Because this is supposed to be fun. It's a hobby. You shouldn't let it pressure you. You shouldn't feel pressured and feel like, oh, I have to make a video. You know? I mean, sometimes I'm in, like, right now, I will not write the second, but there are times when I feel like, oh, I have to make this video. But I still, I'm still having fun with it. You know? It's just more like feeling me being like, you know, oh, I want to make a video, so I need to do this. And by the way, I probably won't be making videos for the next, starting next week, for the next 12 days, because I'm, um, my parents are going to Hawaii, and I'm, you know, they were invited by my dad's childhood best friend. And I, you know, I have no interest, so I'm not hurt or, or offended or anything, because, I mean, I've already went, already gone to Hawaii, and I don't like going to the beach. Now, Hawaii is mostly beach and hiking. Which, hiking could be fun. But, I just, I mean, I've already gone. So, I don't need to go again. You know? And I'm just, I, like I said, I don't like the beach. Because, one, I can't swim. And, two, I just, I don't, to me, it's kind of boring. So, um, I'm going to go stay with my grandma. So, I probably won't be, that's why I'm going to make a whole bunch of videos this week. But, um, but yeah, okay, this is one of the things I want to prove on, is to stop doing this. Stop pausing and stumbling over what I want to say and not knowing what I want to say next. <sighs> Let me look at the question. So, um, like I said, think about it before you delete it officially. Because then it's a whole process if you change your mind to put the video back, you know, to recreate a channel for yourself. So just... Take a break from it. Don't delete your channel. Just step back and wait a little while. And if you decide after a long period of time that, okay, this, I don't want to do this anymore. I am not interested in making booktube videos. Then, then delete it. But just 
don't delete it right away. Don't be rash and just delete it because you might regret it later. Because this is fun, you know. I mean, maybe it's not fun at that moment, but it could still, but it's, it, you know, it's still, like, it might be fun later. You're just right now stressed out or need to take a break. But don't delete it yet unless you want to. But at the same time, don't let me or anyone else, like, ask your friends and family for advice, but don't let anyone else dictate your decision. It's your decision, which I know it's hard and it's very easy to rely on other people to make decisions for you. I mean, trust me, I've been there. I'm still there. <laughs> you know, I've always been the type of person who's relying on other people. You know, I ask other people's advice. Even when I'm DNFing, deciding about DNFing books. Although I've gotten to the habit of I will go on Goodreads. And maybe, yes, in a way this is taking other people's advice. But I will read the reviews of a book that I'm not certain about. And see how many stars the, it was given. And, like, look at the negative reviews and see why they didn't like it. And then I will post, post the question on, like, my Facebook group or something. Or have private chats with other friends. But yeah, it's, but either way, it's your decision, and at the end of the day, you need to try to make your own decisions. Don't let people dictate your decisions for you. You have to make that decision long run. Yes, listen to other people's advice, consider it, but then once you've listened and heard enough advice, just decide for yourself, are you just doing it because other people tell you you should do it? Or do you genuinely not want to do this anymore? Like, just really think about it before you officially delete your channel. That's my advice. Okay, so that was a clean slate book tag. Hopefully this video is not too long or I'm going to have to remake this video a third time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Alright, thank you.